Welcome to the Bentley Systems training course where you will learn how to assign properties to structural geometry using RAM Elements Connect Edition. In this video, we are going to be focusing on assigning the appropriate section properties to our structural members along with their material properties. Now that we've established the descriptions for all of our structural members in our RAM Elements model, let's go forward and start assigning some section properties to both our steel and our concrete members. Now to clear up the display, I'm going to go up to my quick access toolbar and turn off all my currently displayed options. That'll make it a little cleaner as I move forward. Next, when I'm ready to assign my section properties, I'm going to go to my members tab in my data panel and then go to my sections icon. Now all members must be assigned a section before performing an analysis in RAM elements to ensure that the program can calculate the self weight of the structure and build the stiffness matrix. This is even especially true if you are planning on performing an optimization for your steel structures. You still need to assign a section, prop section properties first. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna go ahead and select one of my first floor columns and then I'm going to use my by description icon, which is available in both my spreadsheet tab of my ribbon and my home tab of the ribbon within the selection tools. This will select all of my columns and now I'm ready to assign a section property for it. Now for this particular video, we're going to go ahead and use the databases that are installed with RAM elements. Now in a subsequent video, I'm going to show you how to access these databases and how to modify them to your own company standards if you need to. But for this training, we're going to go ahead and use the default databases. So to access the sections already in the database, we're going to go down to the available sections area, which is located at the bottom of the data panel when the members tab and the sections icon is available. First thing we're going to do is select the group that we want. And we're in the United States for this training, so we're going to select the United States group. Now, if I use this pull down menu, I can also see that we do have databases for several different regions if you're located outside the United States. Next, I need to select the table. This will let me select what type of section I want, and they're all grouped by different features. So I'm going to go over here and select the RC column table. Now when I select this table, all of the items within this database will now become available. And then go ahead and look for a section that fits my needs. I'm going to come down here and select an RC column. I'm going to select a 16 by 16 section. So I'm going to select the section I want, and then what I want to do is I want to assign it to all of the currently selected members. To do that, I could either double click right on this section, or I can use these arrow buttons. Now the first arrow button is basically to assign it to the first selected member, and then the second double arrow button is to assign it to all of the currently selected members. We'll go ahead and double click on the section, and then you can see we've assigned RC column 16 by 16 to all of the columns in the model. You also probably hopefully have under, have realized the advantage to assigning those descriptions first. It did make selection a lot easier. I'm going to go ahead and now select my concrete girder. Again, I'm going to use my by description icon to select all three. And this time I'm going to go to RC beam. And I'm going to select a 16 by 20. Again, just double click on it to apply it to all the currently selected members. And I'm going to repeat this process for my beams. I'm going to select them all. I'm going to go to RC beam and this time I'm going to assign a 12 by 16. Let's go ahead and continue on in our model. I'm going to select my columns and this time I'm going to go to some steel sections. So I'm going to select all of my columns at the second floor level. I'm going to come down here and you can see we have several different varieties of uh, sections. I'm going to go with a wide flange so I'm going to go to the W table and then I'm going to select a W 8 by 35. 
Again, just double click. And then we're going to repeat this process for the rest of the members. If you want to select two different descriptions at the same time, we can hold down the shift key, select a bottom cord and a top cord member, and then do by description. And basically the description for every currently selected member will be selected at the same time. And I would do this if I wanted to assign the same section property to both the top cords and the bottom cords. And we'll go with some steel joists for our roof members. Now again, I want to be sure that I have assigned section properties to every single member in the model. So I'm going to select all of my members and then what I can do is I can go ahead and scroll through the data panel to ensure that I don't have any blank spaces in the section field. And it looks like everything was successfully assigned. Now again, if I want to turn off the currently displayed options, I can go ahead and say turn off all display options. Now before we leave this page, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the additional fields that we also have available in the data panel. So we do have a haunch field. Now this is used to create custom built up tapered members. And we also have our D0 and DL fields. These will be used to define the overall depth at the J end, which is your starting end of your member, or at the K end, which is your ending end of the member. Um, the K end would be the DL of a web tapered member. The last option we're going to take a look at is this IG factor field. Basically, this is how we're going to be able to assign an ACI inertia reduction factor for concrete beams and columns in RAM elements. Now, when the members tab and the sections icon are selected in the data panel, you're going to notice we have a couple of active spreadsheet tools. And these three tools here will allow you to quickly assign inertia reduction factors for concrete beams and columns. Let's go ahead and get started. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to first select my concrete columns. I can do this by selecting one of them and then using the by description icon to go ahead and select the rest. Now I'm going to come back up into my active spreadsheet tools and I'm going to select the assign ACI inertia reduction factors for columns icon you're going to notice that this is automatically going to assign a an inertia reduction factor of 0.7 to all of the selected concrete columns. Now this is the value that is recommended by the ACI 318 and this command should only be used for reinforced concrete columns. Next, I'm going to unselect that. I'm going to hold down my shift key and I'm going to select my concrete beams. Again, using my by description icon. Here, I can go up and select the assigned ACI's inertia reduction factor for concrete beams. And you can see it automatically assigns a factor of 0 0.35. Now, the inertia reduction factors allow you to reduce the moment of inertia value that will be used in analysis. This may be necessary to take into account the effects of fissures and creep in reinforced concrete, and the effect of local buckling in cold form steel sections. The range of values for this property is typically between 0 and 1.0.
In this next exercise, we're going to show you how to assign material properties to both steel and concrete members. When you're ready to assign material properties, you're going to go to your data panel, select your Members tab and your Materials sub-tab. Now with both these options selected, you're going to find your available materials lists are available at the bottom of the data panel. Now in this exercise, we're going to go ahead and use the standard materials database that is installed with RAM elements. Now we do have options where you can customize the materials database, which we'll show you how to do in a subsequent video. Now when you're ready to assign your materials, we're still going to use our select and apply rule. So I'm going to deselect all currently selected members. I'm going to hold down my control key and I'm going to first select all of my concrete members that are going to have the same property associated with them. So that would be my columns, my beams, and my girders at the first floor level. And to select multiple members at the same time, I'm going to hold down my shift key. Now I've selected one of each of these and I've already assigned a description to them. So I'm going to go up to my spreadsheet tab, my ribbon, and select my by description icon to then select all the rest of the members. Now all of these are concrete members. So over in my available materials area, I'm going to first select my group. For this training, we're going to select the United States group, but we do have several other international groups available if you needed. Next, I'm going to select my table, which is basically your material classification. For this one, this is going to be RC, so that would stand for reinforced concrete. Then I'm going to go over and search for the item area. Now the nomenclature that's used for the standard materials database is C, that stands for concrete. Then we're going to have 3-40, for example. 3 would refer to the compressive strength of concrete, so that would be 3,000 PSI concrete and 40 would be the yield strength of steel that's going to be used in the reinforcement. So that would be 40 KSI steel. For this model, we're going to say it's C4-60. So that's 4,000 PSI concrete, 60 KSI reinforcing steel. Once we select it, we're going to go ahead and double click on that material. And then it's going to go ahead and assign that material to all of the currently selected members. Let's go ahead and repeat that process for our steel members. I'm going to start by unselecting everything. And I'm going to hold down my control key and I'm going to select my steel columns and then my top and bottom cord. Once I have those selected, I'm going to go ahead and use the by description icon. Now for steel, I need to specify which grade of steel is going to be used for each in particular member. Now, if you're having trouble remembering what type of section was assigned, I can always go back to my Members tab in my Data Panel and select my sections. And we can see here for the top cords, the bottom cords, and the columns at the second floor level, I have all wide flange steel sections assigned. So let's go back to our Materials area. They're still all selected, and I'm going to go to the Steel table. Here I can find all the different types of steel we have available. And for a wide flange section, A992 grade 50 would be most appropriate. I'm going to find that material in my items list. I'm going to double click on it, which is then going to assign it to all of the currently selected members. Next, let's go ahead and I'm going to hold down my shift key. I'm going to select one of my braces and one of my diagonal members. Again, I'm going to use the by description icon. I went back to the sections area, I can see that these are all either single angle or double angle sections. For this, I'm going to stay in the steel category and I'm going to go with A36. Next, I'm going to select my diagonal members, my vertical members in my trusses. Go with my by description icon, and I can see here these are all HSS tube sections. I'm going to go to the item list. I'm going to find A500 grade B rectangular material. Now there's one extra section or material that I haven't assigned yet, and those would be for my roof joists. So I'm going to select the first one and then select the rest again using the by description command. And then I'm going to go over to the table section. 
I am steel, still in the steel material and I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to find A570 grade 50 cold form. Again, I'm just going to double click on that until it signs it to the rest. Now, while you're assigning material properties, it is important to remember that all materials must be assigned a material property prior to performing the analysis. This material property is going to assign a variety of different pieces of information to those sections, including Poisson's ratio and modulus of elasticity, which are going to be needed in order for the program to be able to construct the stiffness matrix and distribute the forces throughout the structure. To ensure that everything's been assigned a material property, it might be a good idea to select all members in the model and then just scroll through your data panel and just make sure that nothing, no field is blank in this particular area. Here I can see that every single currently selected member has been assigned a material. So we are now getting closer to preparing our model for the analysis. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.